So I want to talk to you today about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus is important in several reasons. The first is that the resurrection witness is to the immerse uh, power of God himself. To believe in resurrection is to believe in God. That if God exists and if he created the universe and has power over it, then he has the power to raise the dead. And if he does not have such power, then he's not worthy of our faith or our worship. The reason why we worship him today is because he is the creator of all things. And not just as the creator of things, but he is the resurrection and the life. Amen. And so the only, only he who created life can resurrect it after death. It's only him today who can, who can do that. He is the only one who can reverse the hideousness of death itself. And he can only remove the sting and gain victory over the grave. Anybody thankful that there's an empty tomb today? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 and 55 says, But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and the mortal will have put on immorality, then will come the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? And O oh, death, where is your sting? Satan seemed to be victorious on that day of the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. It seemed like Satan had won. It was at that point in Genesis 3 that we know that sin had entered into the world. The, the first man and the first woman, they stole from a tree. Sin was born. And the Bible says that sin came by the tree, so redemption must come also. That's the reason why Jesus Christ went back to the tree. He was that second Adam. Amen. And I'm thankful today that he didn't just stay there and he just didn't go to a grave, but he rose up on that grave on that third day. And so it seemed like Satan was victorious in the Garden of Eden. And it even seemed like Satan was victorious on the day of the cross. It seemed that way. When Jesus had died there on the cross, it, it must have appeared that way. I could just imagine, you know, they, they talk about Good Friday. They, they talk about how that, that you know, the sat, or, or Friday, how it, it was awful. And then they talked about the silence of Saturday. Amen. But then we've got the resurrection on this beautiful and glorious, glorious day. But God turned Satan's apparent victory into defeat. What Satan even thought was victorious, God turned it around. Can I tell you today that even right now here in your life, it may seem like that the enemy is gaining ground in your life. But what seems like a victory, you just hold on for a little bit because God has a way of turning things around for your good. He can turn around what appears to be as a victory for the enemy and turn it into defeat. And that's what happened when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Thus, death is no longer a source of dread or of fear because Christ has overcome it. And that day, we will say the same thing also. We've got that hope today, a man that lives with inside of us, that the law, the law will no longer make sinners uh, out, out of us just because we can't keep it. But death has been defeated. And we have hope today, hope that goes beyond the grave. Amen. I'm just not living this life. And sometimes it can be miserable. Man, if you're just living pie in the sky, I wonder what's wrong with you. 
What you smoking? What you taking? What kind of drugs are you taking? If you're real with me today, life stinks sometimes. And that's the problem with our world. As we said last week, our world has lost hope. All the shootings that have gone place and, and, and our own government can't even mention that Christians were killed. They can't even say that. Our world has lost hope. And Jesus Christ today is the hope of this world. And you and I as believers today, we have a hope that we have it beyond this life. We know that where we're going. And that's why suffering today can be, and I don't want to suffer in this life, but suffering makes it a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit easier today because I understand that it's just not in this life, but we have hope that goes above and beyond it. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ is also important because it validates who Jesus claimed to be. He was the Son of God. He was the Messiah. It was him who was going to take away the sins of the world. According to Jesus, his resurrection was the sign from heaven. And it was that that he proclaimed throughout his ministry. Hebrews chapter 16, verse 1 through 4, the Bible says, states it like this, that the Pharisees and Sadducees, this religious group, you know, the Pharisees, they were all about traditions and about following things. And, you know, they, they, it was a religious sect that came really hard against Jesus. It came up, the Bible says, in testing Jesus. They asked him to show, him, show them a sign from heaven. Uh-oh, I want you to note that today. These religious people said, I need a, need, I need a sign. Oh, well, I'll just take that and file that somewhere today. Be careful. Don't get all worked up over signs and wonders and all these kinds of things. Pharisees, Sadducees came to, up to him testing, testing Jesus and asking him to show them a sign from heaven. And notices, notice Jesus' reply to them. He replied to them. He said that when it is evening, it will be fair weather. For the sky is red and in the morning there will be a storm today for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the the appearance of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the times? And then he said it like this. Not my words but Jesus. I wonder today if Jesus was here how many people he would offend. Because Jesus reply was this. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And a sign will be given to you except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. You guys are looking for signs. (laughs) No better than an evil and adulterous generation. They're seeking a sign. And a sign will not be given unto you except for the sign of Jonah. What was that? That Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days. And Jesus told them and proclaimed that throughout his ministry. Many, many people today, like the, these Jewish leaders, say that they want to see a miracle so that they can believe. I will not serve or I will not turn my heart to God unless I see a sign. But Jesus knew that miracles never convince the skeptical. Jesus had been healing people. He had been raising people from the dead. He had been feeding thousands. And still these religious leaders wanted him to prove himself. How much more do you need today? You woke up this morning. He gave you a sound mind. Looks like all of us are healthy eaters. What more do you want today? He's taking care of you. Amen. And yet they wanted him to prove himself. Do you doubt Jesus because you have not received your miracle? Do you expect God to prove himself to you personally before you believe in him? Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing 
me. Man. Lord, you got to help me today because all of us today, just be honest, even my, Lord, I need direction. I need a sign from you. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? Sure, all of us have. Yet the Bible says, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. We have miracles that are recorded throughout the Old, the New Testament, 2,000 years of church history and witnesses all around us of thousands who have been saved, reconciled, and healed by God. And with all of this evidence, those who won't believe, they're either too proud or too stubborn. If you simply just step out in faith today and just believe that there is a God in heaven who is the creator of all things, who created you and loved you, loved you so much that he robed himself in flesh, went to the cross of Calvary for your sins. And he says, I want you to believe in me that I did this work for you. Amen. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ attests to by hundreds of, of, of eyewitnesses provides the proof that he is the savior of the world. First Corinthians 15, verse three through eight. For I deliver, I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and was buried and he was raised on the third day, according to scriptures. He appeared. He appeared unto many. He appeared unto twelve, the Bible says. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time. Most of whom remain unto now. But some, they've died. They've fallen asleep. He appeared unto James and he appeared unto the apostles. And last of all, has, has, as to one... Uh, untimely born, Paul says, hey, he appeared to me also. Paul saw him. And so yet another reason the resurrection of Jesus Christ is important is that it proves his sinless character and divine nature. Scriptures say that God's holy one would never see corruption. And yet Jesus Christ never saw corruption. Even after that, he died. His body never even had the thought to be able to go to start to be decayed. It was on the basis of the resurrection of Christ that Paul preached that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. That through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Acts chapter 13, verse 38 says it like this. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things. If you believe in him today, the Bible says that you're freed from all things things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. Remember today, during this time, they, you have the Pharisees who was trying to keep all these traditions and to keep all this, the, the, these uh, laws. You had the Sadducees. They were, they were the ones who were uh, just following after, the, the, after Moses himself. And, and so... Paul, they, he just he gets it all taken care of. I want you to know that if you believe in him, Jesus Christ has freed you from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. Forgiveness of sins and the freedom from guilt are available through faith in Jesus to all people. That includes you and I today. And so my question to you is, have you received forgiveness? You can ask for it, but then you've got to learn how to forgive yourself from the craziness that you did. And that can be a hard thing. Because I don't know about you today, but I still live with this old man right here. And I remember what I did. And so I believe today that when I ask for forgiveness, yes, he forgives me. But then I also have to learn how to forgive myself so have you received this forgiveness and are you refreshed each day by the thought 
you are made right with God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is not only the supreme validation of his deity, but it also validates the Old uh, Testament prophecies that foretold of Jesus' suffering and his resurrection. Acts 17, verse 2 and 3. And according to Paul's custom, he went to them and, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and giving evidence that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Christ's resurrection. He claimed it. He said, I'm going to go. And he said, but I will raise again on the third day. Mark 8 and 31. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. Mark 9 and 31. For he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And he has been killed, will rise three days later. Mark 10 and 34. They will mock him, spit on him, and scourge and kill him. And three days later, he will rise again. This was all proclaimed before Jesus died. Amen. And so if Jesus Christ, if he did not resurrect, then we today would have no hope, would we? There would be no hope within us. In fact, apart from Christ's resurrection, we have no Savior. We have no salvation. We have no hope. We have no eternal life. And Paul said that our faith would be useless and that the gospel would be altogether powerless and our sins would remain unforgiven. If Christ never raised himself from the dead and there wasn't an empty tomb today, then this book today would just become just another ordinary book of history. But today, this book gives you and I life and life abundantly. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Paul said, if Christ didn't raise him, what we're doing today, it's a waste of our time. Preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testify against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise. If in fact the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. And you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, they've perished. If we have hope in Christ, in this life only, we are of all men most pitied. But Jesus said, He said in John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even after he dies. Yet in this statement, he claimed to be the source of both. He claimed to be the source of resurrection and the source of life. There is no resurrection apart of Christ. No eternal life. But Jesus does more than give life. He is life. And that's why death has no power over him. Jesus confers his life on those who trust in him. So that we can share his triumph over 
death. First John chapter five, verse 11. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life and he who does not have the son of God does not have the life. That's why today you and I as a child of God, amen, people are like, what's different about you? Why do you always have a smile on your face? What's the glow that is in you? Because there is life today that has, that has resurrected even in this temporary life, amen, because we understand he went to a cross of Calvary for my sins. He raised again, amen, on that third day and that he's going to have my life with him forever in eternity eternity he who believes in jesus christ will personally experience resurrection because of having the life that jesus gives we have overcome death it is impossible today for death to win over the believer amen one of two ways we're getting out of here if you are alive and remain today, we'll be caught up with together. Or should we go by the way of the grave? The Bible lets us know that we'll be called up out of that grave. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse, begin reading verse 53. For the perishable, it's going to put on imperishable. Man, this thing that is perishing away. This tent, this temporary tent that I'm housed in. It's got some defects. It's going to go back to the maker. It's going to put on imperishable. The mortal must put on immorality and the perishable will not have put on. But when the perishable will have put on the imperishable and the mortal will have put on immorality, then will come the saying, death is swallowed up. In victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death, the Bible says it like this, is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the first fruits of those who have all fallen asleep. In other words, Jesus led the way in life after death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is important as a testimony to the resurrection of human beings, which is the basic of our faith. Unlike other religions today, Christianity, uh, it, it, it proposes a founder who transcends death and promises that its followers will do the same. Every other religion was founded by men, founded by prophets who've ended up in a grave. But you and I today, as Christians, we know that God became man and died for our sins and was re resurrected on that third day and that the grave could not contain him. It could not hold him. He lives and he and he sits today. The Bible says at the right hand of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ today is praying for you and I. He's praying for us. The Word of God guarantees believers' resurrection at the coming of Jesus Christ for His church at that catching away, the rapture. Such assurance results in that great song of triumph as, as Paul writes, O oh, death, where is your victory? And O oh, death, where is your sting? The importance of the resurrection of Christ has an impact on our service to the Lord. Paul ends his discourse on the resurrection with these words. He said, therefore, my dear brother and sister, I want you to stand firm. Life's hard. But I want you to know today, we are people today that live with hope. Amen. Paul ends it like this. 
I want you to stand firm and let nothing move you. Don't let anything move you. Don't let anything detour your faith. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Dear brothers and sisters, I come today to inject hope into you. Stand firm. Stand strong. Keep your back straight. Even in the crazy world that we live in. Indicting presidents. Not political today, but that was a sad day. It's amazing that even Stormy Daniels even came out and said he doesn't deserve prison. We live in a sick day and age, ladies and gentlemen. And yet, people's faith can waver every which way. He said, Paul said, stand firm and let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Are you doing that? He said, because that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Because of the resurrection, nothing we do for the Lord is useless. When I'm on my job and I'm being a Christian and being what I'm called to be, it's not in vain. When I go above and beyond and give of myself and I talk like a Christian and I'm acting like, like a Christian, I'm being a Christian, all those things, it's not in vain. What we do is not in vain unto the Lord. And so we have to make sure today that we understand that everything that we do, we're looking for opportunities to be the Christ in this world. Because our world today, you may be the only Christ that they may ever see. We know today that we will be resurrected to a new life. That we can endure persecution and danger for Christ's sake, just as our Lord did. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, thousands of Christians martyred through history have willingly traded their earthly lives for an everlasting life and a promise of resurrection. And that resurrection is the triumph and glorious victory for every believer. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose on that third day. And He is coming again. The dead will be raised up. And those who are alive at the coming will be changed. And you will receive your glorified body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, as I come to a close. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until that coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Paul closes it out by saying this, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That is our hope today. So why is the resurrection of Jesus Christ so important? Because it proves who Jesus is. 
it demonstrates that God accepted his sacrifice on our behalf. It shows that God has the power to raise us from the dead. And it guarantees that the bodies of those who believe in Christ will not remain dead, but will be resurrected to eternal life. Jesus transformed today. He transformed his pain into your gain. The cursings that he received into your blessing. His death, your life. His worst day became our best day on this Sunday. And for that, I am forever thankful for it. Aren't you? Amen. Are you thankful today? There's an empty grave. I'm thankful for what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. In our world today, oh, he's just another man. Oh, no, he wasn't. He went to the cross for our sins. And he's like, all I want you to do is have faith and believe in me what I've done for you. And you can have resurrection life again. I wonder today, would you stand with me? I'm thankful today that there is an empty grave. I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ, he, he rose up out of that grave. And that because of his resurrection today that you and I have that hope also. It makes dealing with life a little bit easier, doesn't it? Because every, nothing in this life is permanent. I mean, should the Lord tarry, and I'll be thankful to make it to 70 years. And should the Lord tarry, and I should... Hit 90, I hope that I have a little bit of reversal going on and I look younger at 90 and more energetic than I. But you know, if you think about it, the years in this life versus eternity, there's nothing compared. And so, yes, while we take things one day at a time, there's a hope in you and I. Our world is so, I mean, you can't even turn on the news without them putting fear into you. They say fear sells. Whether they're trying to devour you and take away the American, I don't know. And honestly, does it really matter? Because if it really matters to us, then that means that our hope is really all in this life. But if it doesn't matter to you and I, then we say, you know what? Things have to come to pass. And if it comes to pass, then God chose it. And can I just remind you again, I firmly believe in the word of God. I firmly believe that should things get tight. You know, I'm not a fear preacher. I don't believe in putting fear on people. I just believe, though. But if things get tight and I don't have any other resources, I believe in the word of God. If God can feed a prophet with a raven, then God can go drop a loaf of bread at your front door. The only reason why it hasn't happened is because I didn't need it. But I believe today that if we ever need it, he said, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Amen. America is so, we're so beyond blessed in everything that we have. Amen. Maybe our world needs a good shake up so they turn their heart to God. Maybe. But listen, we today have hope. And our hope today goes above and beyond this life.